Okay, so maybe you have a brand new Oculus Rift laying around, and you also happen to have a 10-year-old dual Xeon Mac Pro laying around, and you want to get those two to work together. How, may you ask? Well, I can help with that. Now, by all means necessary, this doesn't necessarily mean that your computer is going to work as well as this configuration that I have, or is it going to work as well as a brand new machine, obviously. I'm literally making an installation guide on this particular machine that I have just to prove or validate the fact that this actually works on my computer, but also because, hey, you know, why not? Like. You don't necessarily need an i5-4590 or FX8350 or whatever the requirements are. Now, for this particular scenario or instance, I have the brand new Oculus Rift with touch controllers. Here is the other box. While it isn't necessary to replicate my system specifications, this guide is mostly oriented towards first, second, and third generation Mac Pros. Inside this Mac Pro is a set of dual Xeon 5365s with a top Geekbench score of 11,848 and a Compute score of roughly 84 megaflops. The graphics card is an ASUS Strix NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 Ti with 6GB of video RAM via a PCIe 1.1 bus. The PCIe bandwidth is adequate enough for a VR experience as I have not experienced any issues. It also helps that since this is a dual CPU system, I have a dual front side system bus for double the data bandwidth between the CPUs to the Northbridge chip. All of the RAM slots are filled, and in the case of the first, second, and third generation Mac Pros, you would want this filled up completely regardless of the capacity, as this will allow for the maximum data bandwidth when all of the RAM slots are filled. My machine in particular has 64GB Micron 8GB modules outfitted with stock Apple heatsinks. It's not necessary to have 64GB of RAM in particular, however. The boot drive for the Windows disk is just a 240GB SanDisk SSD. The set of two speeds are adequate enough. I am, however, curious to see how well games would perform taking advantage of the full software RAID array, even though it's reserved strictly for my primary operating system, macOS. Now that we've gone over the basic hardware overview, we can start with the setup process. Now, the first part of the setup process can be done in one of two ways. The first method is a bit more direct and requires you to use a Windows 10 installation DVD. Since the first and second generation Mac Pros have a 32-bit EFI, you will get stuck at the BIOS EFI selection screen. There is, however, a workaround for this. Shout out to my friend Greg Hrutke for this version of the installation process. You should go and check out his channel and subscribe for more Mac Pro guides, he's got a fair collection. For the sake of simplicity, I used his guide and created an ISO available for download. Burn the ISO to a DVD and the rest is relatively straightforward, just make sure you have your SSD installed in bays 1 through 3, as Windows 10 will not recognize the onboard ports or bay 4. The second method of OS installation is a little bit more tricky to get by than a clean Windows 10 install, but it's my favorite as I don't have to restart the machine and can monitor the installation all the while being booted into macOS. The trick is to use VMware to mount the physical SSD as a drive inside VMware, and unlike my first method, any Windows 10 installation media would work. There is a link in the description below to help you with this process, it's exactly what I used for my installation process. Make sure you complete the setup right to the desktop. Once done, simply reboot into it. Honestly, not very much is needed to explain this part of the setup process. A lot of what's involved and included with Windows 10 Creators Update is actually going to help with installing and setting up drivers for your Mac Pro. Now, in the case of my Mac Pro, I had to use the latest NVIDIA game drivers for my the GTX 980 Ti, which is the only thing that I actually needed to go out of my way to install. Otherwise, after rebooting several times, even my internal Bluetooth module was recognized, and even the left-clicking and right-clicking features were recognized on my Magic Mouse. However, for some bizarre reason, I'm still unable to scroll with it. I have my gripes. 
If you were to obtain an Oculus Rift and were to follow the general instructions inside the box, chances are the latest version of the installer will not work on your Mac Pro if it's a 2006 or 2007 model like my own, as it lacks SSE 4.2. You will be able to bypass this by installing Oculus Home version 1.3, which I linked in the description below. This will allow you to go through the entirely normal setup process except it bypasses the SSE CPU installer requirement. You may also use USB 2.0 for your Rift and sensors. Performance will not be hindered as a result. Just like I did on my own system, you may update to the latest and greatest version of Oculus Home. You will be consistently prompted with a non-intrusive message that you probably will ignore after a while, stating that your Mac Pro or PC isn't powerful enough to run the Oculus, but ignore this, as there are no deliberate attempts to hinder performance on older machines at the time being. Once done, simply make sure your Oculus Rift is hooked up and follow the on-screen instructions provided inside the Oculus app. If all goes well, you'll be greeted by an introduction with a flying robot inside a small room giving you random objects to play inside the Oculus. The performance of this intro sequence is actually pretty well optimized, so expect it to be fun if your machine is configured similarly enough to my own. Hey guys, so I'm going to try to record this performance test as best as I can just to show you guys that this stuff actually worked and this is the setup process that I used. Now, I chose not to record my screen while playing the game because I don't want to take any performance hits, but also this is just a demonstration. This is not the video where I show you guys the performance tests and stuff. That's the next video on my 980 Ti Mac Pro series. But if you guys went through the setup process, well, enjoy this as well. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at. I know it's kind of sucky with the camera, literally just chilling right on the lens, but it actually works. Alright guys, thank you so very much for watching this video, it did take a hell of an effort to get it all together, especially between getting all the video sequences and stuff, and photoshopping and clipping and editing like 10 second clips just to get it all together, but it was definitely well worth the effort. And I'm only saying that because I really do notice how some people actually enjoy the videos that I put out. And I just wanted to say thank you so very much for actually following my channel, or actually subscribing to my channel, and watching the content that I put out, because this is really out of my boredom that I do this, but also this is out of my pure interest for technology. And this channel wouldn't be possible without you guys being here, because aside from my effort into this channel, it's also you guys watching this channel as well, which also gives me some sort of incentive to actually put out more videos. Now, if you have any tips and suggestions or any kind of comments that you would like to say, just post them down in the comments below. Just don't get too vulgar because this is, obviously it's a ridiculous setup. Like, I was actually getting people very confused when I was trying to explain what this was <clears throat> to the people who uh, were selling me this item at Best Buy or the people who rung me up for this item on Best Buy. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Super Ice Cream Sandwich over and out. 